In this video, we'll be concentrating on composite functions. I've chosen three questions from the exercise in our textbook that we started today. Um, but just a reminder that uh, when we refer to a composite function um, as fog, then that's really the same as f of g of x, which means that we're going to substitute the g of x rule um, in for x everywhere that there is an x in our f of x rule. Anyway, to, let's start by looking at question 9. We have here two functions. So we've got f of x is this linear function, 3 minus x, for this domain here, which is the same as saying negative infinity to 3 inclusive. And g of x is a parabola with a domain of any real number. And part a says show that fog is actually not defined. So remember in class today, we said the easiest way is to set up a little table with our f and our g and domain and range across the top. So the domain of our f function, well, that's given to us in the rule. So we've said already that that's negative infinity to 3. The domain of our g function, again, given to us in the rule. And if it wasn't given to us, then obviously we would have to work out the implied domain. The range, however, we should be looking at the graphs and determining the range for our given domain. So the first one, f of x, is a negative linear with a y-intercept of 3. So the graph looks like that. But we're going from negative infinity all the way up to x equals 3. And so we stop there in this part of the graph we don't have. So the range, therefore, is 0 to infinity. The range of our g function is a parabola that's moved down one unit, so it looks like this. And for any real number, therefore our range goes from negative one to infinity. And from that little table now, we have enough information to help us decide whether fog is actually defined or not defined. So remember the rule that we looked at in class was that for fog to be defined, the range of the second function, so the range of g, must be a subset or equal to the domain of that first function, so the domain of f. So the range of g comes from our table up here, so we work that out over here, so it's negative 1 to infinity. And we're saying that that must be a subset or equal to the domain of f, which is negative infinity up to 3 inclusive. Um, is that true? If you're not too sure, remember a little number line helps you um, see visually where the intersection of those two domains might be. So we've got negative 1 to infinity is over here. And then negative infinity up to 3 goes this way. And this is not a subset of this one here. To be a subset, it needs to fit inside that particular domain there. So that's actually not true. So if it's not true, then we say, therefore, fog is not defined. Okay, part B is actually asking us to define a new function that's now called g star. And what it's really asking us to do is, at the moment, our range of our g function goes from negative 1 all the way up to infinity. And that, as we've seen down here in our number line, that doesn't fit inside this domain at the moment. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that the range of this new g star function, this range that's going to go in here in our table, can't be bigger than 3. So what it's really saying is that this parabola that we've drawn we actually don't want it to be bigger than 3. So what we're trying to find is when is this actually equal to 3? What x values make that parabola equal to 3? So very quickly just do some working out of that. So when is that equal to 3? x squared equals 4, which means x equals plus or minus 2. So we know that's negative 2 and that's positive 2. So anywhere from negative 2 to positive 2 
is okay. It gives us this part of the parabola, which is a range of negative 1 to 3. So if we have negative 1 to 3 in here, then this actually is a subset of this, which would make that new function actually defined. So the domain of this G star, the restricted domain, is actually negative 2 to 2. That means we can define this restricted G star function like this. We can go G star such that this new domain of negative 2 to 2 maps onto a real codomain where G star of x is the x squared minus 1. And we know that if we put this domain into this rule, we'll get a range of negative 1 to 3, which would be in here to here. And that does fit inside that domain there. So that means f of g star is defined by restricting the actual domain. So that's the first example. Hopefully that makes sense, but let's try another one and see if it uh, gets any better. Okay, example two is question 10 from the exercise. And part A, hopefully we're starting to get the hang of this. We draw up a little table. We've got our function f and our function g, and we're gonna find the domain and range of each one. So the domain of f comes from the actual rule. So it's R plus. Now remember, R positive is the same as saying zero not included up to infinity. The domain of G here in the rule is any real number. So again, the range we should get from our graph. So drawing these two uh, graphs. Now this one obviously is nice and easy. It's just a linear, negative linear, y-intercept at 3, x-intercept at 3, and the range, therefore, is any real number. This one here, at this stage of the year, you might not know what that looks like, but you can use your calculator to help you if you like. I'm just going to help you along here. That's what it actually looks like, something like that. And we're only looking at positive x values. So the range, therefore, is 0 to infinity. For that particular question. So for fog to be defined, remember fog is defined if the range of the second function, so g, is a subset or equal to the domain of the first function, f. So from your table you can now see that the range of g is any real number. And we're saying is that a subset or equal to the domain of f which is any positive real number and at the moment obviously we can say that that's not true because any real number does this and positive real numbers oops positive real numbers does this and that's this one is not a subset of this one so therefore fog is not defined Part B, similar to what we did in the previous example, we want to restrict this domain of G, and this time they've called it a G1 instead of a G star, but it's exactly the same thing, so that this new F of G1 is actually defined. Now remember, for it to be defined, the range needs to be a subset of the domain. So if we create this new row in our table, and this is now G1, we want what we're going to put in here to be a subset or equal to positive real numbers. So if I look at the range at the moment of my g function, the g function is this line here. So what I'm looking for is it needs to be positive real numbers. So it actually needs to stop here and just have this part of the line excuse my scribble, with an open circle because we don't actually want it to be zero. Remember, zero is not positive and it's not negative. So that means that in order to get this part of the line, 
I want x to be 3 or less. So in here, I need to go from negative infinity up to 3, but not including 3. Otherwise, I'm going to get 0. And that, if I do that, then I'm going to get a range of 0 to infinity, which we said before is the same as r plus. You could even work that out algebraically. You can say, well, what we actually need is this new g1 of x to be greater than 0. That's what we're looking for. That's this line here. So that means the 3 minus x, which is the rule for g of x, has to be greater than 0, which means 3 has to be greater than 0. Uh, sorry, x, not 0. So x is less than 3, which is the same thing as what I set up here. So now that we've worked out what our domain has to be in order to produce this range, which is now going to be a subset of this domain, then we can say, well, therefore, this new function g1 is such that we have a domain of negative infinity to 3, which maps onto any real number, and g1 of x is the rule 3 minus x. And we know that if we were to sketch that, then we'd end up with that line there, and the range of that line is any positive real number. And that makes our actual... Therefore, f of g1 is defined. Okay. The next example, question 12, we've got this function f such that the domain, I've actually just called it an s. And here's the rule of our function. So it's a square root function of square root of 4 minus x squared. And part a is saying find s. So in other words, that's a maximal domain question. What's the domain for this particular function? So because it's a square root function, we know that underneath that square root sign, so 4 minus x squared, has to be greater than or equal to 0. So to be safe, remember we've said in class, if we draw a little sketch of that, so I know it's an upside down parabola with a turning point at 4, then what I'm actually looking for is this part of the graph here. When is that greater than zero? Or equal to zero means that part of the graph. So what I'm trying to do is actually find these two x-intercepts. So four minus x squared has to equal zero. Four equals x squared, which means plus or minus two equals x. So that's negative two and that's two. So what I've just found is that x has to be between negative 2 and 2. There's my domain. So therefore, s equals negative 2 to 2. Part b is what's the range of f and the range of g? So again, because I know that the next bit is fog and golf, if I set that up as a little table, so f and g, domain and range. So the domain of f we've just worked out is our s, so negative 2 to 2. The domain of g is here in the rule, so any real number. And the range, remember, always check with your graphs. The graph of an x squared plus 1 does this with a point there at 0, 1. So I know that the range there is going to be 1 to infinity. Now careful with the range of this one because it's actually the square root of this graph here. So when the y value was 0, the square root of 0 is just 0. But when the y value is 4, the square root of 4 is actually 2. So the range goes from 0 to 2. And if you weren't sure, you could actually sketch that on your calculator if you had your calculator with you, uh, or if it was a tech-rich um, question. Um, so that's part B. It's just simply ask for the range of F and the range of G, which we've worked out. Part C goes on to say, well, state whether or not fog and goff are defined and give a reason for your assertion. So in other words, all it's saying is use the rule that we've uh, learnt and been uh, having a look at in the last two examples 
So fog is defined if the range of the second one, we should be getting used to the pattern by now, the range of the second one is a subset or equal to the domain of the first function. So the range of G we've said is one to infinity. Is that a subset or equal to negative two to two? And no, because this goes all the way to infinity. So this does not fit into this. So it's not a subset. Therefore, fog is not defined. Repeat the process with golf. So golf is defined if the range of f this time, if that's a subset or equal to the domain of g. So the range of f we said is 0 to 2. Is that a subset of the domain of g, which is any real number? And yes, that's correct. So therefore, golf is actually defined. It hasn't actually asked us to find the rule, but let's pretend it did. The Goff rule, well, now that we've said it's defined, is the same as saying, what's g of f of x? So in other words, we're going to substitute the f of x rule inside the g of x rule. So f of x was the square root of 4 minus x squared, and we're going to put that into the g of x rule. So we're saying, what is that's our g of x rule. So everywhere there's an x, we're now going to put the f of x rule. So it's going to become the square root of 4 minus x squared, all squared, plus 1. And obviously, square root and square cancel each other out. So that's 4 minus x squared plus 1, which is 5 minus x squared. So if it did ask you for the rule of Goff, then it would be 5 minus x squared. Um, but what would the domain of Goff be? Let's just extend the question again. The domain of Goff is actually the domain of F. Remember, it's always the domain of what we're putting inside. So the domain of F, when you go back to the question, is negative 2 to 2. So if it then said sketch the uh, function of Goff, you'd be sketching this parabola but only between this domain. Um, but that's just a little bit extra. Hope that helped. There's three examples there of some composite functions, but uh, as we always say, if you still have some questions, make sure you follow up with your teacher. Good luck.